If you played the original Final Fantasy VII, when you first dive into this remake of Midgar, or should I say iconically jump from the top of Steampunk Express, you'll flash back to 1997, then return to the present, and in awe, you'll be soaked into its drop-dead gorgeous aesthetics, thinking, look how far we've come. I mean, it has been 23 years since the original was released. What did we expect? And if you're new to the well-aged tale of Cloud and Avalanche, in awe, you'll be soaked into its drop-dead gorgeous aesthetics. It's an absolutely beautiful step up from its original material. Um, <clears throat> uh, original material. But is that where it ends? Or have Square Enix and Tetsuya Nomura just made your next game? Everyone's initial impression of a game comes straight from its graphics. The trailer's presentation has shoved you into dropping your wallet down the creator's gullet. Whether it's in-game or the perfectly cut trailer completely comprised of the game's most captivating cutscenes. And the graphics of this Final Fantasy VII Remake failed to just hold to the Buy Me Now video. I can give you the guarantee that throughout your entire run you'll be finding yourself either stopping at points to simply pan your camera around and consume every last pixel that builds Midgar, or completely missing dialogue during cutscenes because you've been hit with a second, third or tenth wind from your first disbelief of the game's beautiful world and heavily detailed characters. Other than the graphics taking a huge slap of change to the face, the gameplay, starting specifically with combat, also has a great big bruise on its cheek. A good bruise. It got a good bruising. I'm just, I'm just gonna start that one there. It has had a massive overhaul. The game's combat system has adopted this very unique, free-form, part-time strategy style that was used in Final Fantasy XV back in 2016. If you skipped out on that one, which to be honest I recommend you should correct ASAP, then let me explain. The original Final Fantasy VII's combat was turn-based. Pick a move, execute it, wait for the enemy to attack, then you start again. Rinse and repeat until you win. Golden oldie concept is flawless if the character and weapon stat numbers are crunched well enough anyway. I'll save that one for another conversation. Well, anyway, what this new system implements is a nice little menu that you're able to access during what seems to be basic hack and slash, bunch em up, shoot em up, magic, cast em up gameplay. And as you can see, you also slow down time, giving you more than enough of it to make an extremely calculated decision on whether you should burn your enemy, freeze them, electrocute them, unleash a crazy inhuman attack, or even summon a fiery demon from the depths of hell, etc. And then you can resume normal time and watch it all unfold before your eyes. And I've got to say, it's extremely satisfying to watch. To add to this nice little feature, during combat, you still have full control of your teammates, just like in the original. But what makes it fit perfectly into this new system is that you have full control. Yes, you can swap from Cloud to Aerith to Barrett to Tifa whenever you wish while fighting, even when they're stunned. I mean, you can't do anything with them stunned, but it still works nonetheless. And that's the point. It works. And each character's movements are so fluid that your hand-eye coordination doesn't seem to take a hit at all, even though each character's weapons and movements are completely different to one another. Now, with the game being an RPG, obviously, you'll be leveling up your weapons and characters, which actually make noticeable power and gameplay changes. And just like in the original, you'll be finding and buying and equipping good old materia. The stat tweaking, move changing, power giving little orbs of light. It's a golden nuggets of Final Fantasy, giving you complete control over how you want to play, right down to practically building your own moveset through spells and abilities. As for the rest of the game, moving away from what makes a Final Fantasy game what it is besides the story, traversal is as easy as making way from A to B. No overcomplicated movements are needed. Anything you need to climb or jump over is automated by a little blue mark on the ground. Although the problem with this is that your animations can sometimes be interrupted if you're in a party with a character that you have to follow. And what I mean by this is that sometimes Cloud or whoever you're playing as will politely yet awkwardly step backwards once or twice, making you want to sigh with impatience. Just clip the characters, I don't care. They're not real people. I'm almost certain they won't be offended. There are also a few other little bits and bobs I found irritating, such as the clunky hanging from the monkey bar sections and slowly, really slowly squeezing through not so tight gaps. But other than that, since traversing the rest of Midgar feels next to seamless, the little nitpicky bits I just mentioned, they won't make you feel like you want to put the controller down. Now let's have a look at what the game has to offer content-wise. So with this game being a storage-eating 90 gig, and I know there's greedy games out there, but this is still big. By the time you finish it, you'll see why. The world is almost fully free roam with side quests too. Although I have to say they're not always the most interesting since they range from your basic go and fetch quests to your, well, basic go and fight quests. 
they can feel quite tedious if you just after a complete playthrough or a platinum trophy, especially since you can clearly tell that they're just filler content, not even tying into the main story whatsoever. And since this entire game is actually a dragged out, blown up, stretched version of the first 20-ish percent from the original game back in 1997, there's also a few main quests that seem to unfortunately feel the same. But if you're into built-in minigames, they have them too. If you want to boast your highest dart score, whack a box score, or arena score to your mates. Yes, there's an arena in here too, for those times when you just want to practice your combat skills or face enemy after enemy for your own enjoyment because that combat system though. But these can be quite fun if you're up for a challenge. Now, the bosses you encounter in Midgar are extraordinary. They have multiple stages, completely unique designs between themselves, and they have more than enough health to be unforgettable, but not so much you just get bored. Although this does depend on what difficulty you have to play the game at. Personally, I went for normal right out of the gate, which is still quite a struggle if I'm honest. It's the hardest one you can choose until you complete the main story and unlock hard mode, which brings me to my next point. Replayability. Does it have it? Yes. Is it good? Well, that depends on how much content you work through on your first run. Once you've beat it the first time, you can go back for hard mode if you're the kind of player that needs a fight to be tooth and nail, bloody knuckles, glare at your screen until your eyes are red raw. But other than that, you're just playing it through again. Of course, playing it again is a must if you're after platinum, but the only things you can really change about the game once you've consumed everything it has to offer is which dresses Cloud, Tifa and Aerith will wear in Wall Market. Changing the way a few cutscenes will play out, but they don't change much or change the game itself either. Not in any way that matters. After that, it's pretty much put down the controller and wait for the next game. But I challenge you to do everything the game has to offer before you finish your first playthrough, because I'm sure you'll miss quite a few things and want to go round two. On to the story. If you've never made your way through the original, I feel I can safely say that you'll love the journey you undertake from the moment you leap onto the platform at the train station, fight your way in and out of the first reactor and discover the secrets tucked away in Midgar through its binge-worthy storyline. It's packed with magic, epic anime style battles, plot twists, antagonists you'll just want to sucker punch, and allies you'll just want to carry in your pocket with you wherever you go. Excluding a few side characters that, quite frankly, you feel like pretending you didn't notice, personally looking at you, Roach and Chadley. Now, if you're that seasoned veteran that ate the original for breakfast, lunch and dinner, I'm going to be honest, you're in a 50-50 boat here since there's a few drastic changes that some would say butcher the original's integrity. But in my opinion, and that other 50% I just mentioned, this new take is quite a mind blower, especially once you reach the end. Throughout, you'll be wondering why certain things are happening, but then it all comes together and leaves you wide-eyed and picking you drop off the floor. So, to conclude this extremely short review, if you're thinking of making Final Fantasy VII the Remake your next purchase, I'm going to tell you to do one simple thing. Check out my playthrough linked in the description so you can see everything I've just talked about and also see a lot of the things that I've just missed. From there, I feel you can make a solid-ish decision, but if you want my very simplified take on Final Fantasy VII Remake, let's give it a score. 9 out of 10. And that's all I signed out. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to show me a thumbs up, drop a comment in the section down below. And if you haven't subbed already, that would be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.